For today's work, you will need two bowls, a spoon, and some sand. If you don't have sand, you can use salt, just like I did. Start off by filling one bowl with the sand or the salt. Pour enough so that it covers the bottom of the bowl, almost halfway. Then use your spoon to scoop the sand or the salt from one bowl to the other. Keep scooping until the first bowl is empty and the other bowl is full. Then you can use your spoon to scoop the sand or the salt from the second bowl back to the first bowl. Notice that when your spoon is full with sand or salt, it helps to move slowly to prevent any spills. When there's a little bit of sand or salt left, I like to shake my bowl like this so that all the sand comes to the bottom. And I take my spoon, I can tilt the bowl at an angle, and it helps to get that last remaining bit of sand or salt. Now this bowl is empty and this bowl is full. So you can take the spoon and go back and fill it back up. For today's work, you will need a colander and some pipe cleaners that are cut in half. I chose green pipe cleaners, just like a cactus, but any color will work. We talked earlier about how a cactus is one of the few plants that grows in the desert with prickly thorns on the outside. Let's pretend that this colander is the body of the cactus and your job is to add its thorns. Take the pipe cleaners and poke them through the small holes on the colander. Once you've used all the pipe cleaners, the colander will look just like a prickly cactus. Make sure you don't poke yourself. For today's work, you will need Play-Doh and some child-friendly scissors. Snakes love to live in the desert, so today we will be making Play-Doh snakes. Now there are two ways to make a snake. The first way is to take a piece of Play-Doh, start with it in a ball, find a flat surface, make your hands flat like this, and roll the Play-Doh ball back and forth. Or, my favorite way is to take the Play-Doh between my two palms and roll the Play-Doh like this until it begins to look like a snake. Then I can take my snake and coil it up like this. I can add some eyes, maybe a tongue. You can also use a longer piece of Play-Doh that you've rolled out and take your scissors and snip them so that you have some baby snakes. Maybe they just hatch from their eggs. For today's work, you will need two bowls, a sponge, and some water. This week we have been talking about how the climate in a hot desert is very dry. When it does rain, Desert plants have to conserve or save water until the next rainfall. A cactus uses its roots to absorb water or soak it up. Use your sponge to absorb the water from this bowl and transfer it to the other bowl. Notice when you submerge your sponge into the water, the water gets soaked up. Then you can squeeze your sponge over the next bowl and the water will drip into that bowl. See if you can use your sponge to absorb all of the water from this bowl and transfer it to the other bowl. For today's work, you will need a piece of paper 
some sand or salt, a spoon, and glue. Let's end the week with an art project. I'm using some salt, so I recommend having a darker piece of paper so that your design will show up better. Take your glue and gently squeeze some out onto your paper. You can make a design, you can draw some shapes, or you can even practice writing some letters. But make sure that you don't squeeze too hard, otherwise the glue will come out quickly and be too heavy for the paper to the hold. Once you're finished with the glue design, take the sand or salt and pour it over the glue. You can even use a spoon to sprinkle the sand or the salt over the glue. Make sure that you have all of the glue covered. Shake, 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 shake. And once all of the glue is covered with the sand or the salt, hold your paper up, shake it around a little bit, and give it an extra little tap and dump it over like this to remove anything extra. Then put your artwork in a safe place to dry. For today's work tray, you will need a couple of pieces of paper. I chose green, like the leaves in a jungle. Some yarn. I have green, like vines, but any color will do. Some tape. A pair of scissors. Make sure you hold the blade at the bottom like this. And this. Any idea what this tool is? Yes, it's a hole punch. So you'll need a hole punch today. The first thing that you need to do is take your hole punch and punch some holes all around the perimeter of your paper. Perimeter means along the edge. So you can punch holes all around. Top, Back on this side. There you go. And then you're going to move on to the yarn. Take a long piece of yarn, probably one that is about twice the size of your paper. Give it a little snip. Get your tape. You'll need two pieces of tape. So you'll get your first piece, find one end of the yarn, and you're going to wrap the tape around the yarn. But the key is not to wrap the tape too thick, because otherwise it won't fit through the holes that you punched. If it is too thick, you can rip the little piece off. So there you go. One end of the yarn has tape, and then you're going to find the other end of your yarn. Get your second piece of tape, and just attach that end to any spot on your paper, just to keep it secure. Now you're ready to lace. Find the end of the yarn with the tape and start by poking that end all the way through the hole. Once you find it, pull, 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 pull. <gasps> and then find another hole and you pull, 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 pull. And look at that. You're making vines. Let's go back to circle time. For today's work, you will need paper, paint, and several pieces of yarn. Instead of using paintbrushes, you will use yarn to make snake tracks. What happens 
when I take a piece of yarn and dip the end into some paint. Make sure that you get lots of paint on it. When you have enough paint on your yarn, slowly drag your yarn across the paper. <gasps> Look at that mark that I made. It reminds me of a snake track. Let's take another piece of yarn. I'm going to dip it into red this time. Dip, dip, dip. There we go. I think I have enough on my yarn this time. Drag it across. Ooh, that one made a really good snake track. Can you fill your whole piece of paper with colorful snake tracks? For today's work, you will need a cup and a quarter of cornstarch, one cup of water, a mixing bowl, and a spoon. Let's start off by adding the cornstarch to the bowl. There's one cup and a quarter cup. Next, I'm going to need one cup of water. Pour that into the bowl. To make this jungle mud look more realistic, I recommend adding some food coloring, but I don't have any blue, brown food coloring, so instead, I want to mix some colors. I wonder what colors that I can mix that will make brown. Let's try a drop of red, a drop of blue, and a drop of yellow. I'm going to mix this all together. Ooh, this is tough to mix. Start from the bottom. Look at What color am I making? It's starting to be a muddy gray color. When you've mixed everything together, put the spoon down. And what do you notice? It looks very liquidy. What happens if you dip your hand in and you try to pull it out? It gets very stiff. You can keep experimenting with different hand motions, or you can add some jungle animals to the mud and try to help them escape. Oh, it's so sticky and tough. For today's work, you will need a transparent jar or cup that means one that you can see through. Some water, shaving cream, and blue food coloring. Let's get ready to make it rain inside. But don't worry, you don't need an umbrella for this work. Start off by filling the cup with water. Don't fill it all the way because you want to save some room for clouds. Then take the shaving cream. You might want to give it a little shake and add the clouds to the top of the water. Next, fill the cloud with rain by adding a couple of drops of food coloring around the top of the cloud. Drop, drop, drop. What do you think is going to happen when the cloud gets heavy and full of rain. Keep your eye on the bottom of the jar. You can keep adding the 
raindrops to the top and around the sides. For this work, you have to be patient. Keep your eye on the bottom. We add some drops down here. This cloud needs to get very heavy. Oh, look! What do you think is going to happen? You're right, the cloud is raining. Here it comes. For today's work activity, all you need is a spray bottle full of water. Now let me show you how this works. You're going to take your pointer finger and your middle finger like this, put them together, and pull this little lever towards you. As you pull, the water should spray out. Now, I don't have any water in this because I wanted to show you how it works. But when you pull it towards you, the water will spray out. Your job is to water all the house plants that you have growing. Plants need lots of rain, just like in a rainforest. So it's your job to water those plants inside of your house. If a plant is too tall for you to reach, make sure you ask a grown-up for help. 